ஹலோ ஏ கிரேட் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் சீரீஸ் ஆன் அர்த்விக் ரெஸ்டன் டிசைன் ஆஃப் ஸ்ட்ராக்சர்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் த்ரூ த கார்டர் ப்ரொவிஷன்ஸ் கண்டென் இன் ஏஎஸ்சிஇ எஸ்சிஐ செவன் டுவெண்ட்டி டூ ஸோ திஸ் த ஃபஸ்ட் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் ஆஃப் த சீரீஸ் ஸோ ஐ ஆம் வெரி ஹாப்பி ஸோ டுடே வில் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் தி ரிஸ்க் கேட்டகரி அண்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் விச் ஆர் அசன்ஷலி டூ பேராமீட்டர்ஸ் தட் கம்ஸ் அண்டர் சிஸ்மிக் டிசைன் க்ரைட்டீரியா ஸோ பிஃபோர் கெட்டிங் இன் த டீட்டெயில்ஸ் ஐ வுட் ரிக்வஸ்ட் யூ டு சப்ஸ்கிரைப் டு த சேனல் பை கிளிக்கிங் த but in the right corner so that uh, you ensure that uh, you have a continuous flow of uh, the developments uh, uh, coming under this new series so let us get into the details so first of all seismic design criteria what is it so the seismic design criteria refer to all parameters required to completely define the expected earthquake loads on a structure the load can be prescribed either in the form of a design response spectrum or design ground motions so this means that suppose that if you you want to make a project specification for the assessment of uh, the seismic loads so obviously it is understood that this specification will have all the necessary parameters that will help the engineer to completely define the earthquake load obviously we know that the earthquake loads are normally defined in two forms so either through a response spectrum or through a design ground motion so what are the parameters involved in the seismic design criteria so we have all to the six parameters first one is the risk category the second one is importance factors then site classification design spectral acceleration parameters definition of risk targeted maximum considered earthquake that is mcer then finally the seismic design category so of these six we will take up the two factors risk category and importance factors in the subsequent discussion so risk category what do you mean by the risk category what exactly is the objective of defining this risk category so ac sca 722 it define a risk categorization associated with buildings and structures as per clause 1.5.1 and the sole basis for such a categorization is the risk to human life and health in the event of their failure or damage and this is done according to table 1.51 so remember that when we talk about risk category we mean we are talking some a parameter that will define the risk to human life and health so let me quickly take you through this table 1.51 i am not going to read this table full because uh, i will be providing you the uh, distinct uh, uh, separation between these various categories in the next page so this is risk category of buildings and other structures remember that this risk category it holds good for a set of loads that includes flood wind tornado snow earthquake and ice loads so basically as you can see that there are four categories starting from category 1 then 2 3 4 each associated with an increased level of risk so what about category 1 category 1 essentially involves buildings and other structures that represent low risk to human life in the event of failure so means category 1 means low risk now what about category 2 all buildings and structures except those listed in categories 1 3 and 4 so what are structures are left that cannot be put either in uh, 1 3 or 4 we'll put this in category 2 now what about category 3 this indicates basically all buildings and structures the failure of which would pose a substantial risk to human life so category 3 is very important to us because it pose a larger risk to human life as well as uh, the public now finally coming to the category 4 that's a category with the largest risk that's, that includes the buildings and other structures designated as essential facilities so let me go a little bit more deeper into this category so that you will be able to apply this concept with distinctly to different category of structures okay as you have already seen right now the categories provided in table 1.51 it reflect a progression of the anticipated seriousness of the consequence of failure and that starts from a lowest risk to human life to a highest risk means we move from risk category 1 to risk category 4 now let me just explicitly define some set of buildings and structures that corresponds to each of this category so we will start with the risk category 
This in refer to buildings and structures that are normally unoccupied. So you know why risk category means risk category one means lower risk because such structures are unoccupied and would result in negligible risk to public should they fail. They typically include storage shelters, gate houses, and similar small structures. Now let me take you to category two. This generally includes a vast majority of the structures. And this includes most residential, commercial, and industrial buildings. And as I already told you, if you have a set of structures that do not fit into any other categories, obviously you will put those under this risk category two. Now coming to the risk category three, and this include buildings and structures that house a large number of persons in one place. Obviously, you know what are those structures. You have structures such as theatres, lecture halls, similar assembly uses. And remember that this also include utilities required to protect the health and safety of a community. For example, power generating stations, water and sewage treatment plants. It also includes structures housing hazardous substances such as explosives and toxins. Here I would, I would like to tell you, based on my experience uh, in the petrochemical plants, uh, I have seen many of the structures that contain equipments that house either uh, um, potentially toxic ammonia or the hydrogen sulfide. So we used to um, always design such structures and all their associated connections uh, for category 3. Now let me take you finally to the category 4. And we know that this is the most uh, uh, important one uh, in terms of the risk. And uh, this include basically the hospitals, police stations, fire stations, and emergency communication centers. And the risk category 4 shall also be applied to buildings and structures containing extremely hazardous substances. So that's all about a detailed description of uh, the, some of the structures and the buildings that comes under various categories from 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, the question that comes to us is, uh, uh, do we have some other simpler way of determining the risk category just based on uh, the number of people that occupies? Yes. If you look into the commentary se section of uh, ASE 722, there is one figure C151 which provide you some basis, a rational basis to determine the risk category for structural design just based on the number of persons. And that sketch is provided over here. As you can see that along the x-axis you have the number of persons at risk starting from 1, 2. So we have got around say 100, uh, say certain likes. And these are obviously on the log scale. For example, as you, as you can see that if you see the number of persons are somewhere in between say 300 to 3000, uh, you will uh, preferably put under uh, category 3. And remember, these figures are number of persons at risk. So this uh, picture, uh, image that is given in the commentary is very helpful if you want to correctly assign a category to the number of, directly to the number of people at risk. So the, obviously you will ask, uh, where are the okay, places where you would use this risk category? So this the risk category is assigned to a structure, number one, to directly specify the importance factor. As you must be already aware of the various provisions in ASE 722, you will find that uh, uh, we have an importance factor that, that is associated with the calculation of the lateral loads. And uh, you know, to specify these importance factors, we directly take it corresponding to the risk category. And then risk category is also one of the two components in determining the seismic design category. Because the seismic design category provides uh, the requirements, the design requirements to be applicable for uh, a specific set of structures. So that way risk category is also important because it constitutes one of the two important parameters that helps you to determine the seismic design cat category. Then the third one is also too important because you know that uh, the drift calculation is one of the one of the most important step in assessing the suitability uh, of uh, any structure under earthquake loads. So um, I would say that risk category is a primary factor in setting the drift limits for building structures under design earthquake ground motion. Okay, fine. So that's all about the risk category. So having completed the risk category, let us uh, let me take you to the importance factors. So obviously we know that the risk category is directly used to specify the importance factors. 
So ASCE 722, it prescribes importance factors and these importance factors are directly used for the computation of the earthquake loads and this is done as per the risk category and the importance factors are defined in table 1.5-2. So this is that table. So importance factors by risk category of buildings and other structures. So as you can see that the importance factor that varies from uh, 1 to 1.5 and uh, from the perspective of the importance factor, you can say that the category 1 and 2, risk category 1 and 2 can be clubbed together and category 3 corresponds to an importance factor 1.25 and we have got a maximum 1.5. And please remember that this refer to IE, that is the importance factor to be applied to the buildings and structures. If we go to the design of uh, the uh, structure components, right, individual components, there is the code comes out with a different uh, importance factor popularly known as a component importance factor ip remember that this component factor ip is uh, nothing to do with the risk category uh, because uh, that particular factor depends only on the importance of that particular component so where would you apply this importance factors so uh, i think that if you have uh, already computed the seismic loads uh, you must be very comfortable in uh, finding the importance, uh, the place for the importance factor and this importance factor that is used in, in quantitative criteria for strength, quantitative criteria. Obviously, quantitative criteria means it is used to specify the demands, seismic demands. So that is why it is written here, the importance factor. So obviously, as this discussion will be taken up later in the subsequent presentation series, this is shown as a divisor on the factor R because if you remember the expression for the seismic load, you will find that there is a denominator that contains R by I. So this means that the importance factor I is used as a divisor on the factor R. Why this is done? Because the larger I means smaller, smaller R. To reduce, this is just to reduce, this directly indicate that there is a reduction, indicator reduction of the damage for important structures in addition to preventing collapse in larger ground motions. So that's all about uh, the discussion of uh, the two important parameters that's the seismic category and the important factors and remember that these are the two factors out of the six that uh, totally define the seismic design criteria. So thanks a lot for listening to this um, presentation and meanwhile uh, please ensure that you subscribe to the channel and uh, I have received many queries from uh, design engineers. Can we put our queries? Obviously, you have to put your queries in the comment box and I am here to reply to your queries because this is that's a way we improve or I can also improve my knowledge. Okay, you will also get a piece of uh, a slice of the knowledge, right? So I would always encourage all the viewers to put their own comments and please also see suggest some modifications if if suppose that you require that uh, i have to take some more topics or you have to i have to go a little bit more deep or if you feel that uh, it is unnecessarily, unnecessarily uh, the topic is uh, taken to much deeper levels so you can always uh, give suggestions to me so that that, uh, that will be taken care in the subsequent presentation and the whole purpose is to make the viewers comfortable with the uh, and the presentation obviously I expect at least to say uh, 100 to 225 small videos so that's all thanks a lot for listening have a nice day bye